Hello, I'm your host, Orn Abdi, and welcome to the monthly one-minute book review podcast, where I break down in more detail the books that I've read and reviewed in the previous month. In this month's episode, the month of September, I will be going into a bit more depth about A Little History of Economics by Neil Kashtani and Mastery by Robert Greene. The former I rated four stars, and Mastery by Robert Greene I rated five stars. Only two books this month, as it's been a bit busy outside of One Minute Book Reviews, and I've gone for a bit of a different layout for this episode as well. So if you're listening to this on SoundCloud and iTunes, head over to my YouTube video so you can see the podcast if you want to um, if you want to see my face. So if you'd like to hear the One Minute Book Reviews, then head over to my channel and you can listen to the individual reviews for this video as the this podcast may contain some spoilers, just to give you a heads up. So this first book I reviewed in September was A Little History of Economics by Neil Kestaini, which is arguably one of the best introductory books into the field of economics that I have read. I will lay out my reasoning shortly why I think this is the case, but before that I want to talk about why I feel like this topic is so important. Actually, before I go on, on to that point I want to talk about how I came across this book so I went to this bookshop this little bookshop in South Kensington in London and this is after we went to the v Museum which is just an exhibition museum in London and we came across this bookstore and I was just going through it and I saw it in there and I felt like it's been a while since I kind of got an idea or reading about economics and it was really really a, a nice way to get back into the subject So in order to understand how our world's government industries, markets and companies work, we need to have a basic knowledge of economics. This is because the factors that determine how each of us perform are are based mostly on the ability of the free market, which is essentially the ability of people to trade with one another freely. The government does have the ability to intervene when high growth rates trigger rising inflation, as well as providing subsidies to certain industries when the growth is low but mostly it is up to the market to determine this. With that out the way, let's talk about the book. So as someone who has studied economics at school and currently qualifying to be an accountant, I need to be aware of the economic factors that determine the origins and effects that they have. But one of the part of my knowledge that was neglected was the history behind why and how economics that we have now came into shape. Was it due to specific factors? Was it luck? Or was it a culmination of centuries of development in industry, science and society that caused this to occur? And this is essentially what Kishtani aims to answer in this book. And in my opinion, he does a good job in doing so. So focusing on the holistic view to the reasons why economics in this form took shape gives the reader the whole picture. Political interests and economic interests are often interwoven where development in one area can lead to change in another. Therefore, the growing amount of conquest and expansion of empires, especially in recent centuries, have caused the efficiency of economics to skyrocket as societies, especially in Western economics, turn to capitalism, um, which has grown the importance of economics in our society. I would even go as far as saying that economic decisions take priority over political ones. It's sad in some circumstances, but necessary in others. Liberals will say that this is a failure in our system, yet conservatives would believe that this is the way the world needs to be, and neither are wrong. Another area that this book touches on is the progress in thought as economists developed a better understanding that determined economies, why economies uh, rise and fall. Adam Smith's invisible hand became the backbone of the free market economics. This theory stated that there were factors of anyone's, out of anyone's control that determined the efficiency of the market. Even though this remains true, Maynard Keynes developed a theory that has become the bedrock, of, bedrock for modern economists. His theory states that economies are based on a level of aggregate demand in the economy. Policies and economic performance are based on this demand, which essentially means the overall demand for products and services in the economy. This became widely known as Keynesian economics, an area that I've studied and understood. But as in the past, the theories that we have become accustomed to change and develop. And I believe this will be the same for Keynesian economics as the way in which we do economics between one another changes and society changes, technology changes and so on. So society's norms will train, change, revolutions will occur, thus changing the systems by which economics function. One downside with this book is that the author does not give an assessment about the future which I hoped he would do so, as it would have been a great way to round off the book. In the absence of him doing so, I will give my own. We will reach a point where trust in financial institutions will be lost, leading to most people to evolve in a way in which we see money and economics that we determine it. 
Governments will try and control the move away from institutions but will eventually go into the hands of the individual. Peer-to-peer -peer lending and transactions will become the norm, changing the way economists work. Very much similar to what I read in the blockchain revolution where individuals will be able to lend money to each other and do transactions that way. So in this situation, will aggregate demand have the same weight as it does now? Uh, I'm not too sure, as trying to calculate demand from these transactions can be difficult, especially if they are encrypted in a certain way. But these are all theories, uh, but it would be negligent to assume that the current system we have will not involve as all others had done before them, as you can see in this book. Each process in each form of economics has been iterative since the start. So to sum up this book, um, this book poses more questions than it answers, but I think that's the role of a book like this. It will give you a full picture of the purposes of economics. Um, it will not really do that. Um, it's kind of far from it, but it will pave the way for further interest. Once you understand and accept that this book becomes something that you can learn and develop from, I highly recommend that it's worth its four star rating. Uh, before I round off, um, this book really gave some really good suggestions on some books that you can pick up. And one of the books that I picked up after reading this book was Capital by Thomas Piketty, who's a French economist. Um, and it's a massive book over there. I haven't actually started reading it because I don't think you can do a one minute book review in a book like that. It's 600 pages of pure economics. So, but if you're interested in knowing more about economics and different theories and different authors, then it's definitely worth picking up because it leads you on to other areas that you can learn about, which is ultimately the ideal thing. So there's a great book that you should read if you want to know about more about economics and why and how it has come to the shape that it has today. So my audiobook for the month was Mastery by Robert Greene, which was my second book for the month. A book that has been referenced by many and that I've read as a seminal book discussing the steps we can all take to become a master in a certain topic. Becoming a master is an idea that many people want to achieve, uh, but do not necessarily know the steps to do so. There are no specific steps that people should take in order to have mastery because each person has their own specific circumstances and opportunities you can dictate this. But there are certain steps that we must all take to achieve mastery. Many are mentioned in this book. Um, instead of listing them all, I want to touch on the concepts that stuck with me after a finished book, after I finished the book and had some self-reflection. The importance that Green puts on the length and depth of the apprenticeship phase, apprenticeship phase, uh, really surprised me. I understood the importance of having periods of training, whether that is in study or practical experience. I always thought that this lasted a couple of years, usually after someone leaves formal education or starts their new job. However, after listening to the argument of Green, as he makes reference to people like Einstein, Mozart and da Vinci, the reader can observe the patterns that emerge when an individual immerses themselves into a long apprenticeship phase. This doesn't have a defined period as such. However, it must be noted that it usually lasts decades rather than years. An interesting concept to try and comprehend as many people feel have different or complicated and diverse professions, um, which expect high levels of comprehension and admiration in a short period of time. What is explained in this book is that although it may seem like individuals mentioned above had a gift from, you know, the gods, an alternative viewpoint is that they all committed themselves to extensively learning their field. Even da in Da Vinci's case, using one field as a foundation to build and grow in other areas. His mastery of art becoming his backbone to his scientific and engineering work. What this concept explains is that a true master is always learning, never confining themselves into the boundaries that society or individuals in the same position act. And what happens therefore is superior results in a superior time frame. They may take longer to achieve the basic rate of success in an organization. However, when they do, the productivity and quality of the work is superior to anyone past or present, and they truly achieve the level of mastery. There are areas in this book that pick up on the idea of negative capability, the ability to focus diligently without distraction and always observe your surroundings to learn how masters do their best work rather than they do. I will not delve any deeper into these topics as I do not want to spoil the book if you wish to read it, but I want to talk why this book is so good and worth reading. Firstly, many books in this genre only briefly touch on the examples and they give that they give to illustrate a point. A slight reference here and there to express a point rather than to develop an argument or a way of thinking. 
this is contrary to this book. This book comes across in a in a way that makes the reader imploring for more, imploring for more examples, imploring for more theories. In some situations, this will be good as it acts as impetus to learn more about a specific subject. However, when expressing a principle, it is important to give a depth, in-depth historical references for points discussed. This is done exceptionally well in this book. The detail given to the reader only adds to the validity of the arguments Green presents, never more, never less, but the suitable level to express a point. Secondly, leading on from the last point, many books in this category do not match well with other concepts. Authors usually write a book that expresses a certain viewpoint as the only way. However, it is rare, even in all cases, that, that this book, that there is nuances and observ observational insights that only an individual can experience. It is not one size fits all mentality. Green therefore tries to integrate as much existing knowledge of topics related to mastery and builds on top of this to achieve a more developed reasoning. So to summarize, those that want to become a master of a specific subject or expertise need to read this book, not just because of the principles that it lays out, but it also provides historical and philosophical knowledge, a must read and well worth its five star rating. So that's it for this month's podcast. I've been your host, Orn Abdi. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe to the podcast. Um, go over to my one minute book reviews and listen to the reviews for A Little History of Economics and Robert Greene and let me know your thoughts. Until ne next month's episode, thanks for listening.